You want to form Japan, but you don't like to play safe? Then you're just right here. Today, I will show you how to form Japan. Not safe, but fast. Order into Japan. Ah, so we are in a bad and good position at the same time. We're surrounded by a lot of enemies, which at the same time means also a lot of expansion, right? What I like to do is not do any alliances, because if we do this right, we don't need any alliances. And um, if you want to play safe, do it. But for us, we want to do this fast. So uh, let's go. I'll check in for generals. This is very lucky. Three siege is definitely something you want to have here. Why I don't like to give the ruler command, sometimes I do it. The problem here is that when the leader dies on a siege, you lose two stability. Not just one, two stability. And the emperor or the shogun has the ability to force the pokoyu if you declare war and uh, peace out, right? If you have under 50% liberty desire, which you definitely have at the beginning, then there's also strong duchies coming to that, because the emperor does like to keep control. He will do it again and again and again. There's a chance that you lose your ruler a lot. So be careful if you want to choose him as a general. So over here, I will then remove one text development, because I like the money, and it's cheaper to develop. Then I take this mission. This mission is develop at least twice this province again see this mission always comes up don't ask me why i just like it for the extra money i will see some land and then i will develop this twice which actually works at the beginning of the game so we have a lot of crown land and we'll waste it all as always i like to do the mana stuff plus one mana from every estate and then religious wise i like to take religious diplomats and religious culture this buys me more time ae wise and this is just a nice effect in general to have and we have all the same religion on this island so it really is just a bonus supremacy over the crown because they become more loyal and then at the end i like to take patronage of the arts because we won't have a lot of money anyway so five percent taxes doesn't do a lot for us does it prestige does and prestige is very important because of the force of poker stuff because as long as you don't have an heir you get a free new ruler that is age 18 19 even though you have no heir. If you have an heir, you have to wait for the heir with a regency. And at that moment, you can't expand anymore. So be careful. Try always not to have an heir, just to be in danger with that, right? You already see this in the background. I probably haven't said this because I do this automatically. I also building a free company right now. The free company, basically, you know, mercs over here. Bum, 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 free company. Your manpower pool is very low and having this mercs just to siege provinces is very helpful, right? Then at the same time, I will try to keep good relations with the emperor as long as possible so i will royal marriage him and improve relations later this basically is just that he doesn't force a poke me early and maybe i can there's the chance that you get out out of the liberty desire with over 50 percent and then he can't force a poke you anymore but at the same time he will really he will really actively try to keep you below he will really actively try or oh, forget very important admin focus you will core so much land here so do an admin focus trust me normally i'm a fan of a middle focus in the beginning not this time admin focus advisors are just too expensive we don't have the money for that and we actually don't need any mill advisors because if you look at our ideas it's like moral and it's like infantry combat ability the only thing we're really missing is uh, discipline so yeah we, we start our first two ideas are quite strong especially the infantry combat ability is very good Okay, without any more talking, let's start the game. I will say speed 4. Now it's the 11th of December. Okay, what you want to do is check around you and see who you can attack without have, getting any problems and how many nations you can co belligerate. The first war, best case scenario, is a war. They don't fight too much, right? So I see this here. I will call him my ally. I will not use him for a lot. You start with this ally, so it's fine. I, I don't like to do too many wars, so the first war should be a small one, in my opinion. So I'll try to do that. Um, I'll go into here, and in combination with the siege bonuses, this should be fine. My ally should help. I mean, that should be enough manpower to just siege this fort. So, very important. I'm the siege leader. This is the most important thing here. And, and now we just wait for the siege to finish. And at the same time, I will look out for other nations that can potentially attack. Very important is you can only attack nations next to you. Like here, I have this war goal for the Japanese battle royale. Uh, let's call it a Japanese battle royale war, war goal. Here, I don't. So it's only nations you border. So the more you snake, the more nations you can declare war on. Just as a heads up. I was really lucky. I broke this. You see, it's June... 1450 so this was like five ticks it broke through that was i've never seen such a lucky siege okay i can't take anything because i guess it's still too early for him to realize that he lost so we'll look out for future expansions yeah let's try this it's gonna be harder though i'm just trying to make new expansions here the good thing is i will build some infantry in the background just to get to 10 because you need nine to siege these capital city forts because this is a level three fort because it's castle on top of capital city yeah so you need at least nine thousand men and if one man dies in a siege tick then you know you're kind of lost so i like to take uh one more so if my rolls are not that horrendous like right now we should have an easy time killing them yeah now they're melting good so now it goes into here i will go into here too i will stack up him amazing you will siege this and you will siege this down there i just want to stop him from building more troops basically 
So, yeah, not a lone star. Just remember, you, your buffer is kind of your economy. If you go bankrupt, this is over. This event, as always, don't click it. It's not worth it. I talk about this every guide. One last time, I promise. 30% crown on is not worth 25 autonomy. Just as a heads up, it's really not worth it. Ignore this, even though you get spammed. After your first war, you don't see this anymore. But until then, try to not click it. Sometimes this can be hard, I know. <laughs> I like to click buttons too. It's a video game. Oh, by the way, what, I, what you should do before, I kind of forgot, I'm sorry is improve relations with the emperor just because what i said right better relations um you get less support good very important and maybe this is a good point to talk about something i did a little bit of clickbait here for me it's not the ultimate guide it will work but i want to make a community project out of this because i saw the ideas of tokugawa and he actually has infantry combat ability and aggressive expansion impact so i think he can have an even better early game but i need your help guys i want to find out i want to read the comments i want to see all the strategies you have for japan to start as an opm and i want to make in like one or two weeks and second video where we really create the ultimate japan guide or ultimate unite the homeland guide right as fast as possible so this is for the elitist under you the pro players <laughs> the i don't need sleep i need answers community okay so if you would help me there that would be a charm i'm gonna i'm gonna try the strats out on stream also talking about community stuff i got this asked a few times i always link my mods below i have a new graphic mod now i also have a mod for for the event pictures the great exhibition mod they are always linked below in the description so if you want to add this mod to your collection there you go okay after three years of pain or actually just two they finally say yes uh, I can take this land, I expand it. I have to keep the fort. The fort is really important. Even though the AI sometimes can go around forts, most of the time they do try to siege this fort and it's such a good defensive position. So for a great coalition war, just remember, owning this tribe of fort is very good. The emperor should still like me. Yeah, he does. I'm disloyal now, but he will probably just, yeah, he uh, disabled divert trade. So you see now, um, as soon as I become unloyal, he will try measures to make me loyal again. I will actually use some of the admin for stability because I feel like I get forced to poke it very soon. We are currently having a bad position because we have to fight the two forts that exist in the north right in the beginning because it was our, our opening co belligerent wars. So it is kind of lucky that we get it done earlier, but it's also a toll on my economy because, yeah, there's only a certain amount of loans I can have and I'm getting closer and closer to that number. And every time I take land and it's not court, you will have less loan limit. So you kind of have to fight the growing loan number so you can take higher loans to pay off loans at the same time you have to combat um the loans that you already have right so you can always pay off your loans with the new loan limit but at the same time your loan limit only grows when you start coring stuff or after it's done right so just be careful there by the way i like to put this japan into three phases like right now we're in phase one the early expansion and the preparation the second phase will be the all-out war against all Japanese nations at once. So you will see why. And the third phase will be uniting and securing, you know, getting up the scraps, getting independence, all of that stuff, right? The, the cleanup. And I will look out for new expansion possibilities. That would be a very big war, but if I win it, it would be so good. And I would even get him. It's between that or waiting, and I don't like waiting at this point. Yeah, let's try it. He's currently sieging, so this is what I'm counting on, that he doesn't do anything. At least be fast, don't lose too many men. It's actually quite critical that we don't lose too many men. Okay, good. Um, we now have this discipline bonus, take it. Now we have our first loan problem. So we have 30 loans, and our loan limit now is 23. So that's what I mean. You, you gotta pay off your loans with the money in the war reparations. And sometimes you even have to debase, because right now I can't take that. I can't take burger loans because, of course, I'm at loan limit, right? Looming bankruptcy. Oh, but I got just under... I got to 22, which means I can take one loan. And with that one loan, I can pay off the other loans. It is so stupid, but it works well, okay? So don't question it. Just accept that you can do this. The emperor will obviously hate me now. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, just an explanation why he hated me before. You see, he decides your land. At the beginning, he basically decides the provinces around him. You don't see it because you're subject, but it's like, you know, it's like this, right? So he wants the provinces right around him. As soon as you start taking that, you, your relations will pump a lot. Or if you take that, you know, anything around him that also counts over here, right? Just be careful. Right now, I took this and that, which is not around him. So it doesn't like it because I took land aggressive expansion, right? He's not as mad. You see, the biggest negative modifiers comes from these two provinces. As soon as I'm kind of a positive, he shouldn't force a poke on me. But this is more of a let's pray together than a real 100% sure advice. <laughs> Okay, yeah, in this case, it wasn't enough. I didn't have an heir, which means I get a very young leader. That's not too bad. So yeah, I will always try not to have a, an heir. That sounds stupid, but it actually is what I have to do here. The one stability loss hurts the most when you get forced to poker. I'm just saying that. The most important thing is this is increasing. <laughs> the, the, the size of the loans is increasing, which means I literally can use the loans to pay off these loans, right? And that's all I'm doing here. I'm just paying off these loans. 
I'm paying off loans faster than I can take them. That's basically, it's, it's a Ponzi scheme, okay? Uniting Japan is a Ponzi scheme. I said it, but but it works, okay, guys? Pro it works. By the way, the Emperor just gave me 25 ducats. <laughs> I clicked it away so fast. Good, good. Getting this course means a higher loan limit. We were at 23, now we're at 28. Look at this. In some cases, you just have to debase your currency. It is what it is. I know we EO4 players, we hate to do it, but sometimes you gotta do what's needed to survive and not what is right, okay? I'm sorry, guys. I haven't talked about the mission tree yet because I don't need to. The mission tree is not something you go for actively. It's something you have on the side and get sometimes. Like, you get more army tradition by fighting, so I don't need to talk about it. You, your states passively become more loyal. You can rush for this for one's ability. Yeah, th this year, if it lose, have at least grown by two states. You do that passively by growing. So in this case, you don't use your mission tree to grow. You use your mission tree while you grow, and this is why I don't go into it. It's not too important to know your mission tree. You can go, there's like really good stuff here, but most of it is interesting once you have formed Japan or once you control all of the island. Just as a heads up. How close am I to? Okay, I actually have a lot of liberty this size. Who I want to declare next is actually a real question. Who just declare on them and take whatever's left? I got four support code again, and oh my god. Uh... Why? Why zero in admin? Why? So while this war is going on and I can't do nothing to do here anyway, what I could do is attack him and all of his friends. So who am I at war with now? All of this. Okay, interesting. Let's go in here. Hopefully we can kill this real fast. We did stack wipe. Amazing. I'm always keeping an eye on the armies moving. I'm basically trying to avoid a coalition. I, I try to be at war with everyone so they can't join a coalition against me. I officially haven't taken the land yet, but... As soon as I take the land, they will all join the coalition. So if I'm at war with all of them, they can't go in a coalition with me because they're already at war with me, right? You, you see where I'm going with this? Is this stupid? Maybe. Uh, could it work? It absolutely does. The only enemy is, is, is your loans. Before I get over 50% liberty desire, I actually want to have a new leader again. So I would love to be like, this is horrible. Yes. Yes. It's, it's still bad, but it's so much better. Okay. Let me take one by one. Okay. Nobody would be mad if I take this. So let's try actually one by one. Expand. My army is very thin stretched. I just want to say that. It's mostly fault because of this war. Estates love me. Stability. I need that. I got a meteor event. I'm not lucky. And ooh, inflation reduction. That is useful. <laughs> oh my God. This is a battle royale, Japan. Not gonna lie. I guess it's gotta end these wars now and at the same time pay off these loans as much as I can. Then what is my loan limit? 24. Okay, how much loans do I have? 18. It's actually quite good. I will actually flip this over to burger loans then. Okay, phase two now is very spicy because phase two is very dangerous. Um, I have to literally fight everyone simultaneously and I, I really hope that I get new mercs really soon because my current mercs are not doing it anymore. The free company just got exhausted. How does the Emperor work? And this will bite me back if he actually declares war on me. The Emperor basically counts who is willing to help him to kill you, right? So if you're too big like right now, have way too much AE, he can declare war on you. And he's basically saying like, hey, I need help. How many of my subjects would be loyal to me and how many wouldn't join? And subjects that I'm already at war with don't count into this pool. So that basically means if I'm already at war with these nations, he thinks he can't rely on them. <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping to declare so many wars to nations that he's like, okay, no, that's not enough subjects to get kill him. So, and that's a theory. Okay, I have to say this, baby. This is a theory of mine. So yeah. Let's test out the theory. I mean, it already tested it out, to be fair, but... Oh, he's going to kill. This is so good. Go, Rebels! Actually got help from his subjects. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to siege as much as I can now. And in the background, I'm hoping I'm getting enough development or anything to get the Grand Company. Grand Company Independent Army. These two are amazing. <laughs> kill my Rebels for me. Good. Like, Rebels are like landmines. I, I just position them around to... <laughs> Hopefully blow up some of his armies. And rebel controlled provinces don't give him war scores. You see, it's just win-win. Oh yeah, but I, I do have to defend. Of course, I do have to defend my, my capital. There's one position you actually have to defend. It's your capital. <laughs> he actually runs away. Okay, good. Add in spiral quotes here like a war not fight is a war won. So I actually got the 7% siege. Okay, I'm officially cheating. Because this happened twice. Oh yeah, why, why am I even trying to suppress this? This is worthless. <gasps> Free companies back! Independent army. Okay, okay guys. Oh, okay, okay. Keep everything together with the independent army. Take the independent army with the grand company. Actually, I I'm gonna take the grand, grand company. New rebellions just means new blockades for my enemies. 
Oh yeah, it's a god. <laughs> Three star general. 15, 1458. Oh my god. Literal landmines everywhere with all of these rebels. Eating them up one by one. It's not like someone new is going to join this coalition, is it? <laughs> so, I don't like that the Aino sort of carpets each. <laughs> because they can do a lot of damage in very little time because of that. Oh, I remember the time where the burger loans were still 42. And now it's, it's 80. <laughs> Okay, I will take another burger loan, so we just refresh them. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, I had to reposition a little bit because I got very weak. If, if you lose too much manpower and the army becomes too small, you are literally under the target of the Emperor. So he could just randomly declare on you. Be careful here. I switched my very low strength Grand Army to an independent army just to that I keep my army strength up. I just wouldn't risk it. Like, I had to reshuffle my finances. I'm also deep in corruption now. It is what it is. But it's better on to keep on surviving and forming this fast than to really live through the consequences of what's happening next. As I said, I'm very unlucky with most of this. The leaders are amazing. That I'm not unlucky with. But what I'm really unlucky with is how much, how many times I got supported. General strategy talking here is I like to take the north first and then go south. So this is why I'm cleaning out all of this up and then go down here and try to clean up all of this up. This is in a coalition. The emperor is not in this coalition yet. So I could declare on this coalition without being at war with the emperor himself. And yeah, I'm always fighting this constant loan limit. You kind of see an indication that the emperor wants to join once he like literally joins the coalition. And um, before that, you should be safe. You've reached your maximum amount of loans. What is it? 11. You've taken 11 out of 8. Ooh. Ooh, I already used this. So, um, yeah. There's one more thing I can do, but it is dangerous, which is a debase Texas. I haven't cored too much. As I said, I'm really bad on coring. That's so unlucky. The amount I have to use for stability. Mm. I don't know how the AI does this, but they're actively sieging the provinces that I am coring. And they literally stopped my cores from that. And that kills me. <laughs> like, not just choking, this literally kills me at the moment. So I'm currently in such a good position, um, laughs and cries, uh, that I'm just trying to suppress rebels with my army points because I, I can't afford this anymore. This is... I, I can't fight rebels and all of these wars. And this is what I mean with we have to find a better strategy for this because it works, but if I look at my economy and my nation... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The war is over. Let me just decrease all of this autonomy. Maybe we can get an economy going because I need a few briefing time. This is the third phase where we try to just eat up all the bits that still exist. I also deleted my independent army again. My economy is in shambles more than even before. But let's, let's just hope this was worth it, really. Because I, I really do hope. Can I say, quote unquote, this is the best economy I've seen in a long time. Minus four. Interest is actually only two. For maintenance is stupid. So I might just uh, delete this. Okay, I reformed a little bit and got my economy a little bit more under control people started to leave the coalition which is kind of confusing to me <laughs> more than anything um yeah i didn't got this down enough that i would like to say it's fine but yeah it's getting better it's getting better guys we're getting there i think the rebellions are the biggest problem here not gonna lie and even the enemy armies or the the admin points for me it is especially the rebellions because i can't just the resources I have to invest into them is, is crazy. Get down autonomy everyone, everywhere I can. I can't anywhere. Ooh. So now I'm trying to invade him because I don't have a strong navy. I'm just trying to get military access to all islands. So I'm clearing up the south now. Yeah, I was really just stuck because of my admin points. The one time where I don't know how, how much I showed off that, but this leader had for quite a long time. And that was really bad. So you can keep going. It will kill your economy, but you can get rid of this. The distress still works, but I'm, I'm kind of unhappy with, with the position I am right now. I don't want to be unfair and say, oh, I'm going to re-record this and it looks better then. But, you know, the stretch still works. It is just very unlucky for me to show it off like this. Please write in the comments suggestions what I could have done better. And we will do it better as Toku Tokugawa in the next guide. That's a problem. If it, I don't know if you know it with YouTube, but I can't even make polls or anything. Because I'm not a big enough YouTuber. This is why I have to make a video to ask questions like this. <laughs> Maybe we can get into the YouTube program. I believe. I believe, boys. I believe. So, but I officially control all the islands now. Oh, stability drop. I have to take it. I can't afford the money. Oh my god, the rebellions. Oh my god, the rebellions, guys. But the leaders are literal gods. Look at this guy. Oh my god, there's still so many rebellions. How many How many clans are there in Japan? Oh my god. I'm kind of getting back control over my nation. I have to piece this out, mostly for money reasons and also the... War exhaustion is kind of killing me. And yes, this will mean more uprisings. I know, I know. Every nation I take it through more uprisings. 
I'm gonna sort this off a whole extension so I see which one I have to focus on the most. I think I'm gonna ignore them now because I, I really I lose so much time just by cleaning. I did two years nothing else than just running after rebellions. Like jokes aside, I I'm done with this now. If rebellions happen, they happen. I, I gotta finish this wars now. Usage this, we go north. Which is very dangerous because there could be a lot of uprisings along the way. War for the Emperor. I lose three stability. Get three war exhaustion. So this is the end game. Are you ready for the end game? I certainly am. Not really, but I I, I want to be. Okay. Ah, oh, come on. Nah, you're not gonna run away. Let's try this each capital. Just annoy him. I'm a duchy. I'm a grand dame, you know. Let's go. So I own his capital now. Just gotta get this now. Come on. Chop chop. Just gotta carpet teach this back and actually kill him. And that should be that. The only dangerous thing about carpet teaching are my rebels. <laughs> uh, now it's time to stack up him. Before he can do it. He actually built a fort. Oh my god. One more fort and then we're free. Stop. This is an illegal rebellion. You're not allowed to. You too, illegal rebellion. The second time? How many times can you get this event? I got it before. And I'm, that, that's what I mean. Like, I lost so much stability. Not being able to core killed me. I'm still winning. But, you know, at what price? You know, that, that kind of stuff. Just saying, you can do so much better if you don't get as much comets and um, support. Could, not gonna lie. I, I just keep playing and my soul is slowly dying. But it is what it is. That is the north. Beautiful. That was not even part of this. But, uh... I take it. And now all of you, bam, will prevail. War is over. I'm not overextended, so it's actually good. I get this, and I get this. Everything is finally united. I would love to say I would have done it in a more stable position, but you know, the stars didn't align for me, and I didn't have a lot of luck. But you know, it is what it is. I have the most corrupt Japan ever, but the good thing is, I can, after just 36 years, from this small nation to all of this, Click that button. The old ideas are very good. I would stay with them. And if you want to see the Japanese ideas, they're also quite nice. And it's more of a gen generic build. As I said, you get AE impact at the end, which is very nice. And infantry combat ability even stronger at the end. But you got to get there. So you have a harder early game now. I, I would say maybe save your Japan formation or something like that if you want to do it tactically. But yeah, for now, I would just say stay with old ideas. They're quite strong. I will try to stabilize this nation. <laughs> And then I will end the video, okay? Because I feel bad leaving off with this. So, my money is a little bit in the positive. I have a manpower pool again. And my nation is kind of nearly already caught. So this is, the, this is the point where I would feel comfortable starting wars again. As I said, I'm open for suggestions. Please write in the comments. Join the streams. And then in two weeks, I will make another guide. It will be better. And that takes in consideration all of your comments. So if, if there is a video where comments count, it's this one. 